Welcome to the Ivory Coast and the Republic of Benin. This is the birthplace of voodoo. This ancient religion has been part of the lives of the West African people for over 10,000 years. Even though the majority of the population are Catholic, over 50% of them practice voodoo in one way or another. The rituals of voodoo are mainly used to repel bad spirits and diseases. Voodoo is used for protection and healing, but it is believed that some people choose the path of witchcraft in order to do evil. I will soon become an apprentice to a very respected voodoo priest, and I will take a look into both the bright and dark side of voodoo. I'm loving this! There's gunfire everywhere! I'm finally home! My mission is to learn everything I can about voodoo. I'm the one who decides who gets to live and who dies. participate and they dance in order to honor the gods, show their devotion, but most importantly, to make the gods happy. These are the San Beto. They guard the community. One can become a San Beto by joining their secret society where magic is studied. When a person becomes a San Beto, he will no longer have the ability to speak any human language. They have magical powers and the ability to become invisible and they report personally to the village chief of any wrongdoers. All these people have gathered here at the beach to watch one of the Zambetos using his magical powers to walk on water. Jesus walked on water. Zambeto walks on water. Jesus, your move. of the ancestors control the living world and decide the fate of its people and communities. Voodoo is all about doing good. If the gods and spirits are happy, one can live a successful and healthy life. If you have done something wrong and angered the spirits, you have to apologize to them through sacrificial ceremonies. If the supernatural powers do not favor you, it is believed that you will face misfortune. You could become sick or even die. Behind me lies the residence of the area's most respected voodoo priest, Agban Jeje, and from this moment on, I'll be at his mercy. The 57-year-old Agban Jeje began studying voodoo at the age of five. He has devoted his entire life to helping others. I am here to ask him to be my mentor. Agban Jeje worships three gods, and he has three shrines in his home. They are Chango, the god of thunder, Ogu, the god of iron, and Legba, who serves as the intermediary to the other side. Unfortunately, Agban Jeje is very reluctant to accept an outsider as an apprentice. Before I can begin to learn about voodoo, I have to cleanse myself. So we're going to conduct a sacred ceremony, which is about purifying my soul and body. <laughs> In the rituals of voodoo, food and water are often offered to the gods and the spirits of the ancestors. Because of this, animal sacrifices are very common. The blood, flesh, and souls of the sacrificed animals are gifts to the spirits on the other side. If the gods and spirits of the forefathers are satisfied, they will reward you with health, good fortune, and protection from all evil spirits. And I, I'm, I'm just trying to keep this 
whole thing together because I was light years away from my comfort zone. We were sacrificing animals, pouring alcohol and blood and milk and spit on the gods. And I'm holding the other chicken and the, the chicken's heart is beating faster and faster. I can feel it in my hands. And he's probably sensing what's going on with his friend over there. He knows he's next. Agban Jeje places the feathers of the sacrificed animal in my mouth as a sign that all gateways to the other side are now open. <laughs> I know that I'm part of something so much bigger than me and something that is so sacred to the whole community and to everybody here in Benin. We're doing this because voodoo is all about doing good. And good deeds make sure that good comes back to us. You can see and feel the presence of voodoo basically everywhere you go. And if an individual has some kind of problem, trouble or sickness, they always turn to Mahu. But in order to speak to Mahu, one must first summon the spirits of the ancestors and conduct sacrificial ceremonies to please the sub-god that they worship. And these will work as a gateway in order to talk to Mahu. And the symbolic meaning is to exchange the soul and body of an animal with the sick person that you're trying to heal. So you're basically telling the gods, please take this goat and spare my child. Even though the purification was successful, Agban Jeje is still not satisfied. He feels one of the spirits of his ancestors resisting my acceptance as an apprentice. Agban Jeje doesn't believe that I'm capable of understanding voodoo. I can't afford to make any mistakes. I did not understand one word of what I was just told, but this is my new room and this is my new bed. I'll be spending my nights here. Fishing is a very central part of life here. And right now we're drawing the biggest net on the planet. My mentor Agban Jeje still won't let me take part in any voodoo rituals because he believes that the spirits of his ancestors do not accept an outsider. For two days straight, all I've been good for is sweeping the yard. Today, Agban Jeje allows me to help him gather some herbs. <laughs> Herbs and plants play a very big role in voodoo, and this is Agban Jeje's garden, where we collect all the necessities we need for our everyday potions. Welcome to Dr. Arman's laboratory. This is where I mix all my magic potions. <laughs> okay, guys. This herb is used as an antibiotic or on the surface of the skin if you have some allergies. This beautiful flower is used if you have a high fever. This herb, on the other hand, is used to bring good luck. You can put this in a perfume or eat it. I think I might need some of this back home. This herb is used to clean your liver, or if you have B. hepatitis, you can take the seeds from the flower and the leaves, boil them in hot water, and drink. 
But you have to remember that Mother Earth is filled with herbs and plants that have healing power, and there's basically nothing you cannot cure with voodoo. Except AIDS, because that shit will kill you. At first I thought one of these plants smelled strongly of alcohol, like really old booze, but then I realized it wasn't the plant, it was Akban Jeje, my voodoo priest. And of course it was Akban Jeje, he's a voodoo priest for crying out loud, they love alcohol. <laughs> Today, for the first time, I have been allowed to participate in Agban Jeje's work. To celebrate this, I join a carnival passing through the village. Oh, damn, I'm loving this! There's gunfire everywhere! I'm finally home! Oh. These girls dressed in black are the girls who just graduated from the monastery. And this is their graduation party. Agban Jeje collect herbs for two days. He seems happy with my work. Now I am given a new errand and I am sent into town to buy some materials for his rituals. find snakes, monkeys, hippos, bats, yes. alligators, basically any animal you can ever imagine. Is it real? This is a python. It is a very sacred symbol in the religion of voodoo. And apparently it's not very fond of me because it's hiding its head. Different fetishes have different meanings and I'll take you through a few of them. For example, a monkey head. A monkey is a powerful and intelligent animal. You can use this monkey to tie it on a talisman that will give you good luck, power and intelligence on your project. The crocodile symbolizes power. You put this head on your family shrine, you make your wishes and you become powerful. Then you have the chameleon. A chameleon is a good luck charm. You will grind this chameleon and mix it with the soap that you use to wash your body and it will give you good luck. Okay, thank you. I was just thinking to myself that I've never seen so many dead animals in one place. And then I realized I'm full of crap because all I have to do is go to the closest supermarket and I'll see just as many dead animals. Even though my mentor Agban Jeje has devoted his entire life to helping others, there are still voodoo priests who use their powers for evil. In these areas, there are also people who practice black magic. And in black magic, where in voodoo you will use animal parts, in black magic they will use human parts. So sometimes these graves are robbed and the human parts are dug out and sold in the black market. Paul is Agban Jeje's friend, and he knows much about voodoo priests who are involved in black magic. It's a secret society yeah. in which only the witches recognize themselves, they know themselves. Okay, nobody will know who a witch is. You can never know a witch. I could be a witch now, yeah. and I'll be doing bad with you, but you'll never know. I think uh, becoming a witch is, uh, um, those who are witch uh, become witch because of jealousy. Yes. 
It was maybe I build a house or I buy a car. So because of this jealousy, else he will try to practice his witch uh, power on you to destroy your good luck. What are some of the bad spells that a witch can put on you? They could make you sick. Yes. And you can die. Yeah. A lot of things that witch can do. And all is bad. Yeah. In the voodoo practice, you have to be good. You have to be friendly. You have to be, uh, you know, have to show your love to your neighbors if you want to live a longer life. Otherwise, if you are doing good, voodoo will punish you. So if you are a friend of Godu, Godu will be your friend. <laughs> Agban Jeje is so satisfied with my work that he wants me to participate in a very important healing ritual. A local girl is extremely sick. Even one mistake in performing the ritual could make everything go wrong. I can't take part in this ritual without the blessing of the gods and spirits. And such permission can be asked only through a voodoo oracle. The Ogu, that's the god of iron, is your protector. Water gods and the Ogu gods always protect you. The oracle's ritual is successful. I am now in the favor of the gods and allowed to take part in the healing ritual. I must now bring the good news to my mentor, Agban Jeje. <laughs> Agban Jeje seems to trust me now, and he sends me to the market to buy the sacrificial animals. This has got to be one of the toughest challenges I've ever faced because our voodoo priest, Agban Jeje, has put me in charge of arranging a very large ceremony today. I'm in charge of choosing the animals that will be used for the sacrifice. This is a very hard task for me because I'm the one who decides who gets to live and who dies. Today, it's this goat that gets to give its life to save the life of a sick young girl. Okay, merci. Thank you. Come on, come, come. has decided to stay here on the side of the street, eat some sand, and watch traffic. And I don't have the heart to drag him around. Two, two men, two. Come on. The sick girl Isoka has arrived to Agban Jeje's house. Isoka has been under a high fever for a long time and she has lost too much weight. Her family is afraid that the fever and sickness might kill her. I will assist Agban Jeje throughout the ritual and I can't make any mistakes or else everything will go wrong. Uh, this is the water that will be used to bathe the girl and purify her after the offering.
person from the West, animals are mainly food, so you go to the supermarket, you buy meat, you go home, you cook it with your friends and talk about how delicious the meat was, but you never actually think about the moment the animal was slaughtered. I really hope this will cure the girl. The fact that these people strongly believe in this magic might actually make a difference because you can never underestimate the power of the mind. The hardest part of the ceremony was to see the goat being thrown at the gods after the sacrifice. But, but you have to understand that even that has a meaning. It has a sacred meaning to the priest, uh, to the whole community, because whichever way the goat's feet are going to point, are they going to point at the gate or are they going to point at the house? This all has a meaning and this will tell the priest were the gods satisfied with the sacrifice or were, were they not happy with something. And if he has to conduct another part of the ceremony again, they will do what is necessary to make the God's happy. The ceremony is a success, and I finally feel that I have earned my place as Agban Jeje's apprentice. in Benin is over. Both my mentor Akban Jeje and his gods have accepted me in their voodoo community. In voodoo, the well-being of everyone is a priority and that is why the entire village gathers to celebrate and pray for the girl. On this journey, I have learned how important religion and a functional community is to the well-being of its members. In voodoo, it is extremely important to always do good because the gods and the spirits follow your every move. They will reward you for being good, but they will also punish you for all your bad deeds. The, the celebrations, they're just so full of joy. There's the drumming, there's the music, everybody's dancing, everybody's happy everywhere you go. They embrace you, they welcome you, and they just want to be with you. Come and join us and party with us and have fun. And voodoo is all about doing good, all about believing in karma and, and wanting to do good unto others so that good will be done unto you. I just love this here. If you ever come to Africa, it will steal your heart. Welcome to Kathmandu. This is the capital of Nepal. In this episode, I will journey through mountains and valleys up to the Himalayas to a place where no roads go. And that place is the forgotten kingdom of Lo. My mission is to climb the Himalayas and go live with a yak herding family up in the mountains. The higher we go, the harder it is for me to walk as the air is getting thinner and thinner and the yaks are moving so much faster than I am. Oh God, I really hope I don't have high altitude sickness. It feels like I'm dying. 